Now it's only right to start this video with the wise words of Eric Ten Hag. All eras come to an end. And his era at Manchester United has come to an end. But the million dollar question is, what's next for Manchester United fans? And I'm here to tell you. Next is a manager that walked into Sporting Lisbon and won them their first Liga Nos title in 19 years. What's next for Manchester United is a manager that developed some stars at Sporting Lisbon and put them on a platform where the club can go out and sell them for a ridiculous amount of profits. Next is a manager that plays a very attractive, a very penetrative, a very dominant style of football in Portugal, in a league, in a country that he's been dominating for the past two, three years. Next is a manager that has the whole Sporting Lisbon fan base in tears. That's what's next for Manchester United. In this video, we'll break down everything. The tactics, the setup on and off the ball, and what Manchester United fans can expect from their new manager, Ruben Amari. Now, if you're new, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit the like. It helps the channel grow. But as always, let me know what you think in the comments. Let's get into it. Now, the best place to start is, what are Ruben Amarim's principles? Every single manager in the world has their own unique principles that make them stand out, that differentiate them from other managers across the world. When it comes to Ruben Amarim, these are the principles that I gathered from watching his team over the past week. Number one, vertical football. Number two, central overloads. This is my favourite because it's something very different. It's something that Manchester United fans have not seen and they're not used to. And it's the most exciting principle. Number three, third man runs. And number four, bait pressing the opposition. Now, let's look at these things in a bit more detail. But let's start off with Sporting Lisbon, Ruben Amarim's principles in build-up. Now, Ruben Amarim likes to set up his team in a 3-4-3 shape on the ball, especially in the first phase, especially when trying to beat the opposition press, when trying to play out of the back. Let's look into it. The 3-4-3 has a few tweaks that give Ruben Amarim an advantage in beating the opposition press. Number one, the wing-backs in the 3-4-3 drop and deploy themselves as traditional full-backs. They take up the position of a full-back. One of the centre-halves in the 3-4-3 steps forward into midfield. From what you can see, it creates a full three shape in Sporting Lisbon's own half. Now, what are the benefits of this? Number one options every player on the ball will have options to the left to the right and ahead of him no player on the ball should struggle to find a teammate but number two and this is a benefit to Ruben Amarillo and this is something that's cost Manchester United under Eric Ten Hag if Sporting Lisbon were to be found out were to make a mistake playing out of the back they've already got seven players in their own half so the benefit is defensive security if you make the mistake You've got bodies to put out the fire. Now, the first interesting aspect of this 4-3 shape in build-up is the centre-half that steps forward into midfield. And it requires a unique profile. It requires a centre-half that's got good reading of the game, knowing when to step up and when to sit back. A centre-half that can play in central areas. A centre-half that's good on the ball, that can scan the pitch, that can pass the ball with both feet because this centre half becomes the architect, the orchestrator in the first phase. Now this 4-3 shape in build-up benefits Amarim and it gives him that advantage when beating the opposition press but at the same time creating a trap, the bait pressing trap. When you've got seven players in your own half, if the opposition were to press you, You've got seven players in your own half. You've got seven possible passing angles. You've got a goalkeeper that turns the seven into eight. The players are in close proximity of one another. Every player has a passing angle to the left and to the right of him. But when you retain and hold on to the ball in your own half, sometimes it forces the opposition to push high up the field, to engage and try and press you. Where it gives Amarim's team an advantage is, number one, they could play around the opposition press because they've got the bodies to do so. But number two, 
if the opposition were to commit a lot of bodies forward, they can bypass the midfield. And it's something that Amarim does a lot in European football, where they bypass the midfield and go long into their three attacking players. And those three attacking players will be responsible to capitalise on the lack of bodies in the opposition half, the time and the space. So this 4-3 shape gives Amarim's players two ways to beat the press. We can either play ground football and play around you, or we can go along and capitalise on the space that the opposition leave in behind. Now, once the opposition press has been beat, Amarim's teams go from a 4-3 shape in build-up to a 3-1-6 in the opposition half. How does this happen? The centre-half drops back into a defensive trio. The wing-backs push high up the field, and one of the midfielders is now required to step forward into a more offensive area why and i mentioned at the beginning of the video central overloads and it's the one principle which is the most exciting i feel like manchester united fans have gotten used to having wingers that pick up the ball cut inside and have shots on goal amarim has a principle which is very similar to pep guardiola's at manchester city and it is the primary focus the primary aim is for my team to play football in central areas the wing-backs, the wingers, are on the pitch to maintain width, to stretch it out, to create space in the middle for the central overloads. There's a reason why one of the midfielders joins into the attack. The more bodies in the central area, the more players in close proximity, the more players that can bounce the ball off one another, the more players that can get themselves into dangerous shooting areas. Now, the primary role for the wing-backs in Amarim's setup is to maintain width to stretch the pitch out because if you stretch the pitch you stretch the opposition if you stretch the opposition and you overload the center you're creating a lot of time and space for your teammates in central areas when it comes to amarim there's a special type of goal that his teams love to score and like i said it's a principle which is very similar to manchester City, and it's the cutback goal ever since amarim took over sporting lisbon no team in liga nos has scored more cutback goals than Sporting Lisbon. When the wing backs stretch the pitch and you overload the centre, it opens the door for what? Third man runs. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. The two interiors behind the nine are now required to drift out to the wide, to combine with the wing backs. Doing so attracts the opposition out wide, creating a passing angle, creating an opportunity, opening a window for that extra midfielder that's now being required to step forward into a more offensive area. From what you could see, the interior and the wing back combine, sucking the opposition down the right hand side, creating an angle for a third man run for a player to get into the opposition box. When you overload the center and you stretch the pitch, you force the opposition into the center which now creates space for your wing backs out wide. One switch off play, the wing back is 1v1 in isolation. The cutbacks become common. Why? Because you're overloading the opposition box. It's, it's an avenue of scoring goals. It's a very sustainable way of scoring goals. And it's a type of goal that Manchester United fans don't really see much of. Now, off the ball, it's a 3-4-3 shape. They press in a 3-4-3 shape with the three players in attack spearheading the press, but the wing-backs join in. The wing-backs apply the pressure to the opposition full-backs, forcing the opposition to either go long or play in central areas. But once the two extra midfielders step up, you've now got that numerical advantage in the opposition half, and it helps Sporting Lisbon, it helps a Ruben Amarim team retrieve the ball in the opposition half but once the board is retrieved you've now already got seven players in the opposition half to impose themselves to create an opportunity and to put the board into the back of the net but the primary purpose behind this 3-4-3 shape is it allows Amarim's teams to always have minimum three players defending each third of the pitch to summarise, it's an exciting appointment. Why? Because it's a manager that's shown in such a small amount of time he can dominate the Portuguese league. He can do the impossible. He can win Sporting Lisbon their first league title in 19 years. He can impose, he can set up a team to go out there and dominate whilst also 
developing some big players. It's a manager that brings a brand new idea, a brand new formation, a brand new philosophy to Manchester United. Touching on the formation, you've never ever really seen Manchester United deploy the 3-4-3. Manchester United have never ever reaped the rewards of the benefits of the 3-4-3. It's a formation that might help unlocking Manchester United, that might help unlocking some of Manchester United's key players, but it's a formation that can give Manchester United that edge, that competitive advantage in big games. Why? Because it's a setup that not many teams in the Premier League have come up against. So it makes Manchester United stand out, and time will show whether it's in a good way or in a bad way. But having said all of that, I've got one concern of Amarim. And it's the fact that Liga Nos is dominated by three teams. Benfica, Porto and Sporting Lisbon. Outside of those three teams, the level in opposition is very, very, very low. We're talking roughly the average squad value of all the teams outside the top three, 25 to 30 million. Now, that's, now that speaks volumes on the lack of investment, the lack of player quality, the teams as a whole how difficult they are to come up against. And I feel like when coming up against that type of opposition, week in, week out, it's not as challenging to impose yourself, to deploy different formations and different tactics. The Premier League is completely different. Teams in the bottom half spend on average £80 million in the Premier League. The Premier League has more money. With more money comes more quality. With more quality, you get tougher opposition. But having said all of that, what Amarim has done at Sporting is impressive and it's definitely earned him the move to Manchester United. And now the primary job is to go out and revamp this team and get them playing by your principles, by your philosophy. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit the like, make sure to let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you guys on another one.